Hey everybody, it's Robert off of the Old Bird Farm and on this video, we're gonna be driving this 1969 or 1970 U-Haul home about 30 miles after it sat for about 30 years. It's gonna be an adventure. All right, so we're here to rescue this 68 to 71, basically abandoned U-Haul truck out here in uh, rural Georgia. By the end of this, we should be driving it out of here. Uh, it needs, <laughs> should be. Optimism. Optimism, that's right. It needs brakes. Uh, it needs to run, of course. It doesn't do that. But before anything, we have to do landscaping around it because it's a, it's a little grown up. So yeah, stuff has definitely been growing up around this truck and living in it. Lots of wasps here. There's a snake skin on the ground somewhere around here. And you can see the, the trees are trying to reclaim it. All right, so here we go. We got the forest around the U-Haul knocked down so we can actually see it all the way now. Let's take a look inside this thing. Check the door, see if it has the gear. Ah, uh, let's see. Nope, I don't see a year. I mean, it used to have one, but it's, you know, it's a little faded off. You think it's only got 68,000 miles on it? It probably might. Yeah. It might. Now, the pedals look like 68,000 mile yeah. pedals. The seat though. The seat's missing something right there. I probably should have sold that seat I just sold. Oh look, lowest cost. <laughs> well, good thing those are dead already. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> Cab has a little more rust than I would like but it's fine we can make do it's got brake fluid already in the back so the brakes are probably already leaking yep <laughs> fire extinguisher just in case so i don't want to dent your floorboard with that one you might find the rust spot hey it's got oh, all right. there we go got to have some sun visors okay Here's stuff all right here's an insurance card here's belt dressing from like i don't know belt dressing from the 90s oh sweet new old yeah. stock i could just swap out seats instead now i got rid of it that's fine i'm sure you have like 10 more i don't mind seats the somewhere seat. it'd be kind of cool it's a nice seat all right so 68,000 miles brake pedal goes to the floor so that's got to be addressed and uh let's look under the hood oh there we go all right so this is uh it's a y block what did you say it was it's like a uh 330 330 which was common in these and yeah, so, need a new hood. yeah, it's definitely a, the hood's probably the worst part. Those are speed holes. It's weight reduction. Better airflow. Rare factory option. And the fluid in the radiator looks phenomenal. Oil on the engine yeah. it has oil. It's black, so it's also not like the milk. Yeah, it, it looks like oil. It looks like old oil. And then someone has converted it to a Petronics. It says electronic ignition, do not open. Someone's converted this truck to, over to a Petronics igniter. So that's kind of hopeful. Hopefully this is... How's it look? Is it being replaced? It looks new. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. The, uh, oh, I was just looking at the igniter. 
Oh, well, the, nah, it, yeah. Eh. It can, it'll clean up. It'll, yeah. That'll still fire. Yeah, I think so. The coil, on the other hand, yeah. looks like is original to 1970. And so today, what the goal is, is to remove this carburetor so we can go have it rebuilt and hopefully when we bring it back out, it'll actually start. All right, moment of truth. Carburetor's loose. No, it's not. It's got that on there. Yeah, tools. That would be bad. Tools. All right, we got the carburetor off, obviously. Got the intake covered up. Carburetor's gonna go to a shop or Lewis's house to be rebuilt. And then we're gonna come back out of here. We're gonna come back out here and we're just gonna drive this thing out of here. Before we go today, we'll have a little peek in the bed, or the box, rather, of the old U-Haul truck. I personally like all of this wood. And it looks, it looks really dry in here, Lewis. I don't see any signs of water in here. That's probably where the bodies are hidden under the big orange tarp. I bet you this is the original equipment car talk. It, it is. You know how rare it is to find the original tire chalk in these? Yeah, I'm almost ashamed to burn it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I opened it. You can close it. Yeah. I'm gonna make a nice motor home. I mean, uh, well, I said that's where the bodies are in there. Did you say motor home or murder home? Oh, both. Yeah, I thought you said murder home. I like the old U-Haul slogan. I don't think that's their slogan anymore. Adventure in moving. You you know, when you rented a U-Haul back in the 70s, you weren't just moving. You were going on an adventure, apparently. It looks really cool, which I never thought I'd say that about a U-Haul truck, but it does look really cool. And at least three of the tires are taking air so far, so that's a plus. Um, and we'll be back out here to full with brakes and uh, getting it running. Getting it running is going to be the easy part. No, uh, you shouldn't have said that. I know. I shouldn't have. But if getting it running is the hardest part, then that means the brakes were the easiest part. Can we wait till winter? Yeah, it's hot. I'm sweating like I'm in church. So about three months ago, we started the project of recovering this U-Haul truck that's been sitting for like, I don't know, 20 years or something like that. And uh, three months later, we're going to finish this and try to drive this thing out of here today. So today is the day. Uh, when we left this truck last, it had air in all of the tires. Today, this tire is completely flat and off of the bead. So we got to change tires first thing. This should be an interesting day. All right, so we got air going into the tire and this is the new or the rebuilt carburetor. So I'm about to go ahead and put this on the truck. All right, so I got the new carburetor gone ahead and installed on this thing. Now it's time for the fuel pump, which is right here. This is the old one, um, and we have a new fuel pump laying up here. Right here. So I'm gonna put that on next. Then after that, I reckon we'll more or less be at the point of seeing if this will run. So cross your fingers, y'all at home. Um, we have the new fuel pump installed, which was more of a pain than I thought it was gonna be. Um, so that's bolted on. The lines need to be hooked up. And of course, carburetor's yeah. on. 
by the way it's really hot out here so i found this old pillowcase in the back of the truck and this is going to help keep some of the sun off of my head this is some survivor man stuff right here you want me to make you one too i'm just dealing with it five hours later look at that it actually turns over all right let's uh double check everything before we do that again <laughs> that's the first turnover since probably the clinton administration that's right that was that sounded good too didn't it? yeah yeah that's i think uh we're gonna see some happen here yeah may not be good but fine. So, yeah that's right i'm gonna give it a little shot of the starting fluid i don't recommend doing that but that's how we're doing it today go ahead battery connection i bet yeah negative is kind of questionable yes it is Wait a little or something. Try it. Do it again. I don't think we have spark. I don't think we have spark. Definitely no spark. No, but it spurn, spins good. It does. Shouldn't we be smelling fuel or something? Um, probably. It's got a long way to go, though. All right. Uh, just, 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 test spark. Which one's the coil? Coil. It's just, right there it is. Yep. I don't have a screwdriver, so I guess this will do. Maybe it'll do. Right, you wanna... Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> you ready? Yep. Yep. Okay, so we do have spark. Yep, we do have spark. I don't know how strong it is, but it's there. I did feel a bit of a tingle. Did you? Uh, I can't find the hole. Well, let's look at the cap and see if... um. You checked it last time. It was in pretty good shape. I did. But it should have uh, fired off a, on that starting fluid. There's a rotor and all in the glove compartment, so I don't know. No, no, that calf is... Looks a lot worse this time than it did last time. I wish I looked at it. Let's see these. Yeah. Ooh. Corrosion mm -hmm. just came right off. Yep. That's what we got. I didn't think to bring a cap and rotor. Let's see. Okay. It almost sounds like it's spinning over too easy now. Yeah, it does. Well, we're getting spark to the cap. I guess we need to check for spark away from the cap. Yeah. <laughs> Which one's number one on this? I don't think it matters. But... If that Protronic system was dead, we wouldn't be getting spark. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. We get spark to the engine. Well, it would, comes out of that, goes into that, yeah. and then spreads down to the engine. Well, that's what I mean. If we're not getting spark to the engine. Well, yeah, but it would. It would. We wouldn't be getting any spark if that Protronic was bad. Try it again. Should I wait for the glow plugs to warm up? Yeah. Hold on. Again. Alright, 
let's get that started a minute. Okay. Well, that's better news. Yep. Oh, it's holding the butterfly down, force it to suck gas. Yeah. Hold on. All right. Try it again. All right, we're getting gas now, so try it. Again. How come it's not like in the TV shows where it just starts right up? I don't know. Uh. Oh, hold on. That solenoid is smoking. Oh. And I did not bring a new one of those. Uh. Do it again. Yeah, I do that. Just leave the key on and jump solenoid. Yeah. But I don't think that's going to do anything because I think it's in the voltage going to the solenoid. But try it and see. That's in the starter, not the solenoid though. Yeah, smoke. it's in the starter. So you need to get down there and hit that starter with a hammer. A hammer I don't have. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if it's just this connection. Could be that too. Uh, oh, man, I'm, I'm there like a little girl because I can't get into it. Yeah. starter yeah i see smoke coming from it starter's done you want to push start it no okay so options are we call it a day go get the other truck drag it home mm -hmm. we finish what we can master cylinder bleeding the brakes put the truck try to jack the truck up and get weight off this tire or mm -hmm. just take the tire with us but I gotta have something put under it. Right. Um, and then come back. I work half a day Wednesday, but I don't know what you got going on during the week. Yeah. And I don't know how soon I can get a starter. Okay. Do you tell me? I mean, I don't know what to do to get started. I really yeah. don't. But I would like to go as far as we can, at the very least. All right, so we are back with U-Haul uh, day number like 15, or I, I don't know. What I do know is it's gotten cold here in Georgia. Last time we were out here, it was hot. Now it's cold. So we're going to try to move this big U-Haul today after the bad news on the last U-Haul that the rear brakes were completely locked up. We figured, you know, we should probably check to see whether these brakes are locked up or not. The original plan is to get this truck running, replace the master cylinder, and drive it home. 
we've got it kind of running got to replace the master cylinder and uh you know got to check and make sure stuff isn't locked up so i've got the chain hooked to the super questionable bumper right here i mean it's it's kind of attached to the truck we're gonna see if the old wrecker will pull it and see what all is locked up on this one i think it's just gonna roll just fine all right let's see if it'll move moment of truth right here is this going to be even more of a pain or is it going to roll free or is the bumper just going to pull off i think the bumper is just going to pull off and she's rolling yep that's good it rolls that's what we needed to know well, that's all we need. yeah i mean the bumper almost came off the u-haul so <laughs> okay well I'm, oh shit i hope i wish it rolled back further yeah, I rolled right back to where it came from. I tell you, there's a whole lot less holding that bumper on now than there was before, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, task one done. Yay. And didn't damage any of my equipment. All right. Check. All right, so now it's time to remove the starter from the U-Haul. So we're going to do that, and by we, I mean Lewis. I, and I've already got all kinds of stuff in my eyes. You have safety glasses? Okay, I've got the easy job of handing him the tools. All right, so two bolts of the starter are out, and conveniently, Lewis doesn't see another um, bolt for the starter. Oh, you did? I was about to go under there and look. I mean, no, I can't find it anywhere. It's not on top of the starter at all. Do you have to get it from up here? I think so, but I'm too fat really? and full of 12 inch shove to do it. <laughs> all right, I guess I'll go in. <laughs> that one yeah right there Ow. yeah Ow. see there's what a lot the of that too got me? yeah there's vines i was in there trying to remove without cutting myself anymore so that one you have to use like a like this yeah a wrench for so you're gonna get down there and <laughs> got your hat oh no annie give me my hat back yeah <laughs> it's got any slobber on it I shall get underneath there and catch it, I guess. Yeah, I didn't say, will you get down there and hold it? And catch it, I mean the starter. Yeah. <laughs> Would y'all tell mine? God. Oh, man. I, I, boom, boom, damn it. No understanding of personal space. Is this in with all this rust? No, it's, it's more further up. Oh my goodness, that's a lot. Ow! Uh, you have a starter I with have you. A starter and ow, tetanus. or whatever it's called. We can get. Oh, where's the starter? <laughs> I, I thought we were gonna see a starter come out. Oh, there. Man. Oh man, that's a big starter too. It's you know it's the it's thing stout. is when I was researching starters for it, it was showing this monster thing with the solenoid on it. Yeah. I found one place that showed this starter, so I thought they were wrong. Gotcha. Yes. I guess those were just stock photographs I saw. Maybe. But yeah, I know where to get the starter now that I've seen it. Good deal. There's the. There's my missing half inch wrench. Put this in your car. Somewhere down in here. Ow. 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 There it is. What? What? All right. Uh, well, let's pull this so we can match it up. All right, so it's been about six months since we started this U-Haul recovery. <laughs> and we are, yeah, day whatever. But we are back today, and today is the day that we're going to be driving this U-Haul out of here. Right now, Lewis is replacing a uh, flat tire on the truck. In a very safe manner. Very, very safe, yeah. But this does not count as the dumb things done today. Was, the day just got started, so there'll be others. <laughs> This jack is leaking a lot. Jack says no. Yeah. Please this... just let me die. <laughs> this is not going well. I need to hurry up before I lose this thing. <laughs> All right, so this is what we're going to be doing today, putting this tire on here so it's sitting on uh, tires that are mostly have air in them and are, I would say, mostly not dry rotted, but that one is pretty badly dry rotted. And uh, then we're going to jump in and try to get this thing running again. 
So here we go. We'll be back in about three hours when he gets this, you know, up in the air and the tire on. Last time we began trying to start this truck, uh, we burned the starter up trying to start it. So today we have lots of new parts. For it. There's a brand new starter. There's a solenoid. That's the old solenoid. Thing. So there's the new solenoid. Look at all this shiny this truck's gonna get. Is that this is a uh, distributor cap? The one that's on this truck is kind of crusty. So there's the rotor. Oh, we got a coil. Spark plugs. Oh man. Ain't no reason this truck shouldn't run now. Look at the drag strip. Man. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Did you get the performance plug wires? Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. So lots of new parts are about to go on this truck. Where's the rotor? Uh, it is right there. Oh, where's the cap? Okay, there it is. Yeah. yeah, right there with the cap. These will be mine. Lewis will take the starter. I think that's. I don't know. I crawled underneath it last time. I think you should have a turn. I feel like uh, because you crawled under it last time, you know how the starter goes back on. So. Yeah, I can't argue with your logic. Yeah. I'll be here. All right. Attempting to uh, replace that. No, uh, what? There's no like fun way to get underneath this truck either. So, yeah, <laughs> that's true. All right. Oh man, my parts are over here. These little thorny damn bushes. All right. So she's gonna swap the plug wires. Oh, we're gonna leave these on there for now, I guess, and uh, make sure I don't mess the firing order up. Remember, I've got some good authority in these industrial engines that run. Yeah, so first spark plug wire that I pulled off just came apart um, in there. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that plug wire. Throw it to the side for now so we know which one it is. And uh, maybe, maybe the rest of them won't come apart like that. Let's see. Hey, that one stayed intact. All right, and this is supposedly one. It says one on the distributor cap there. And there's one on the distributor cap here. All right, so I've got a new solenoid installed on here, new distributor cap rotor, and two spark plug wires replaced that broke. We should go through, do them all, and change the plugs as well, but that'd be the right thing to do. And we're just not gonna do that. So how's it going down there with the starter? I'm not happy. No. I don't know what's taking you so long. I've done everything up here. I've done all of my jobs up here. Oh, I'm getting plenty of iron in my diet, I know that. Yeah, and iron and tetanus. Ugh. That looks painful. Oh. All right, so it's fixing to be a moment of truth again for the abandoned U-Haul. We've got all this new, of course. We've got new wires running down to the starter. The ground cable is original to the truck, so that's probably gonna catch on fire and burn as soon as uh, we get it running. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's it. We're about to see if we can't get it running now. Once this thing is running and we keep it running, I'm guessing we're gonna leave rather quick. So we should probably put everything away, I'm thinking. What about brakes? What about brakes? <laughs> Let's see what happens when it's running. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna get into position here. Uh, we need to look at this tire too. Yeah. Maybe we should just see if we can't, because I think it'll take a little bit of fooling with to get it to run, right? Yeah. I'll give it a little bit of starting fluid and see if this will start and actually, you know, run somewhat decently this time. All right, you got the gas hooked up? Gas is hooked up. Key. In a totally safe manner. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hooked up. Um, key has been lubricated, so. 
Oh yeah, that was a problem last time. Ooh, I already feel it. Ready? Yep, give it a little bump. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. Right, hold on. I haven't sprayed anything or anything. I just almost fired. All right, go ahead. Switch the key off. I'm not sure if it, it doesn't. I mean, it could just be an adjustment, but. Oh, it's rich. What? It smells rich. Yeah. Good idea of moving the lock cylinder. That made a huge difference. Let me see a flathead screwdriver. Because it's, it's bogging down with the power valve. Um, I thought there was no power valve, but it's just bogging down with more fuel. It's that Robert choke. <laughs> we don't seem to have any vacuum leaks around the base. That's what I'm worried about the most. It is running. All right, go ahead and start it back up. Make sure everything's clear. Low plugs are warming up. but it's not running carburetor's not doing quite right um, and i can't quite get it dialed in so i think there's something going on with that but we're going to try to move it and see how well it does oh. How many decades do you think this has moved under its own power? A few. <laughs> a few. So we do have to mess with the brakes. Yeah, we definitely have to mess with the brakes. Hey, look at that you haul radio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it works. <laughs> That's going to be... Yeah. It's open.
sounds awful. Oh, oh. <laughs> I forgot there's no brakes. A little bit more. Yep. How's the power steering feel? <laughs> whoa, whoa. It's in there somewhere, you'll find it. Like a new truck. That's set for 50 years. There you go, yeah. <laughs> I'm not really sure what's going on with the carburetor. All right, but it runs. Yeah, uh, it's, it's halfway it's, runs. Yeah. Enough to drive or? Um, I, I know that, but I'm saying, how are we going to get enough fuel delivered to get down the road? That's a separate issue. Oh, you stopped in the dirt, damn it. Oh, is that cap still off? I think it is. Will it build pressure without it on there? Yeah. Well, it's... No, the cap's on. Is it on? Yeah. I was building pressure and I just lost a bunch. Well, yeah, it's, it's vacuum. Yeah. That big vacuum canister has to be. Feel brakes? No, no oh. Damn it. Get my hopes up. Yeah, use the parking brake to stop. Is that will that work? Are you gonna do it? <laughs> Well, it could be a bunch of vacuum leaks from that carburetor. Oh, yeah. How did it look? I was inside. I didn't get to see it moving. <laughs> did it look cool? It, it, yeah. yeah. I think last time it moved was the Reagan administration. But... Yeah. All right. Well, what's next? I guess we got to figure out. We got to go. Now we need the woe. Yeah. So, I would see, for one, if there's still fluid in that master cylinder. Yeah. I'll check that and uh I'll pull the truck up so the tool will Yeah, definitely. And it's not overheating. It's not overheating yet, which is a good thing. There's no more fluid in the master cylinder either. So way back when, it is hot in here now, which is, means it's way more annoying to be under the hood of this thing. Way back when at gas stations, they used to give you paper funnels. Well, they don't do that anymore, but they do give you pizza boxes if you buy pizza at the gas station. So that's gonna serve as a funnel. There was no fluid in the master cylinder. 
cylinder so it all either went down to where it's supposed to be or it just well there's nothing on the ground that was dripping yeah all right i'm gonna pump it so we're gonna see if we can't get any brakes i hear them working do you yeah open oh yeah you got fluid rusty nasty shit that's coming out all right, so we may have brakes. It's closed. Okay. Pump it again. All right, ready? You can't open it much with the... Open it. Okay. All right, close. Okay. Open it. I need a longer wrench. All right. Oh, whoa. Oh, I just, the pedal just went way down. Yeah, that shot out like, well, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> It shot out like what? Nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, move to the next. Yep, I'm going to the next one. That one looks pretty good. The fluid looks like shit, but it, looks, it works. That's good. So we may have brakes on this after all. We just need a little oh. bit of brakes on it. All right. Give me a minute to break this one loose. I don't know if y'all can hear him back there, but it's it's actually pretty entertaining. I see fluid on the firewall too, so it could be where I spilled it or this master cylinder could be leaking out the back probably leaking out the back so the right way to do this would be you know replace at least the master cylinder and then you know go through the wheel cylinders All but right, ready. we're not doing it the right way okay. open all right close all right open oh that came out good close open all right close Open. Uh, yeah, that's out. There we go. Close. Okay. How's it feel? Pedal feels, pedal feels pretty good. Let me start the truck and see. Get yeah, get out from under it. <laughs> and we should probably check the master cylinder first and make sure there's still brake fluid in it. So I'll do that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to see if this will stop. I did sit on your hat. I got Rob, Robert foot print on my head. You do so. Yeah. The good news is it does stop a little bit now. Just a little. The bad news is it feels like one of the brakes is sticking now. It sounds, you can hear it, but this way you can hear working. Yeah. So it's kind of stopping. So let me show you our fuel setup. I don't know if I'd do that. The, I, <laughs> there's our fuel setup there just in case this thing catches on fire just to ensure it's a total catastrophe um we've got the fuel can there and i think you know we're just about ready to drive it home which by the way i should add this is where there needs to be a disclaimer this is don't try this at home you should be saying that like every few seconds should be all right so this truck is half running half stopping now so you know it's the the right thing would be to fine tune it and uh, get it stopping good, get it driving good. Uh, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna try to go out of here now, vacuum leaks and all. So this is Lewis's truck, as you guys already know, and it's his first time driving it. So you've got to kind of uh, feather the gas. You'll feel it, give it a couple pumps to start it. <laughs> just like that. Let's see if he can't get it out this gate here. Feel the gas pedal on it. You've got to really kind of feather it. Go to the floor, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, exactly. And these car carburetors have like governors and stuff on them too, so they're kind of funny. Look at that.
Oh boy, here we go. This is uh this is gonna be a ride. So I'm taking over to drive this for a minute. Okay. This ain't going well. This ain't going well at all. There's no good way to pull around or pull over right now. Give her all she's got, Count. This is going to be a long ass trip. Yeah, this is it at the moment. I've got the can leaned up and the hose definitely in the can and I just made it in the third but as soon as we find a place to pull over the problem is. what's that? what do you think the problem is? I have no idea well if from over there it was doing it no, it, yeah. the dogs can't dig up on it well it wouldn't start a minute ago. Um, yeah, I just figured that's because the tube came out and they were blocking. Yeah, I believe that's once why you, too. I'm sure once you got past that, it'd be okay. Yeah, I was hoping. But I think it's definitely carburetor issue. It is definitely carburetor. Um, 
we should pull over somewhere. As much I was hoping it would fix itself by now. This is what I got myself into today. Let's see if this works. Put it in gear too. So here's what happened off camera. We just pulled over, the truck broke down, I changed two spark plugs in it, just two, and uh, pulled around with the carburetor a little bit more. Seems to be running better right now. Um, the spark plugs didn't look that bad, we're going to try it again. Better, second gear, but we're going up a steep hill. And this truck does not like hills at all right now, so who knows? Let's just get up the hill, and we'll see. We will see once we get up the hill. Come on, you all! Come on! Come on, up the hill, guys. Yeah. Come on, let's, let's just stop bogging, let's go. I gotta get back under the hood of this thing. Just wanna show that we were at safe refuge at the church. We're broken down again. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get in here. No, in here with them uh, you know, relics, carburetor thingies. It's under load, it loses all power. Um, you bring me a half inch um, socket and wrench. Half inch. A socket and ratchet. Oh, I see what you're doing. I almost wonder if it doesn't have something to do with the... Um, this is a 12 millimeter. Oh, it's the same thing. Yeah, close enough. The number of um, I wonder if it doesn't have something to do with the governor on here, too. But it, I don't know. Maybe it's a corrupt governor. Well, it could be. I don't know how these... Lieutenant governor, maybe? Do it right before it breaks. That's at the point. All right, go ahead and try to start it again. And bring me a flathead screwdriver before you do that. Sorry. Man, can't get out of the okay. dirt out of my nose. So what I don't get is if I turn the idle screw all the way up, it'll rev mm -hmm. all the way up. Yeah, right here. Accelerator pump, maybe? The accelerator pump is 
is pumping, but it's bogging with the accelerator pump. Um, almost like it's getting too much fuel. So what? I'm, two things I'm thinking. One, I'm thinking idle it all the way up, and just you know, hell Mary. Yeah. Um, the other thing is I want to check for vacuum leaks again. So you can bring me a bottle of brake clean. Makes me nervous sitting in there with it running that fast. So, I don't know. The carburetor's just being like non-responsive. Um, and I don't think there's, there seems to be a vacuum leak on the back, but it doesn't seem like a really big one. Yeah, it's not high revving leak. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not enough to cause that. So, when we try to accelerate it, it's doing nothing. It's just bogging. And I can see it it's shooting gas down, but, I don't know. I just don't understand what the heck is going on here. But it's revved up all the way. So if you just want to get in it and see if you let the clutch out, if it'll just rev itself up and you can rev through the gears, control it with the clutch because the front brakes are leaking now and see how fast you can get it up to. So bear in mind, all these carburetor problems that we're having with this truck right now, this is a rebuilt, should have been new, ready to go carburetor. Uh, but those seem to be hard to come by these days so I'm sure that someone will pipe up in the comments and be like it's this or that and one of the things that you'll say I'll be like that was it you're right um, we just ran hold on the only thing I didn't do was check the timing but you know, I, I think that that's not a problem and I don't have a timing light. I did attempt to loosen the distributor and move it and it would not move. And I don't believe that the timing has been changed on it anyway. And I don't think that this is a timing problem. Um, it feels like a carburetor problem. I don't know if there's a vacuum leak that I'm missing. It's not around the carburetor if there is, or I don't know what is causing it to not rev up um, like it's supposed to. So, you know, I usually when I work on an old car, this got, you know, even with a bad carburetor, you know, you could get it to work halfway. This one's been rebuilt and I cannot figure it out for the life of me. It's on like a 330 engine. It's a Holly with a governor on it. So, you know, this carburetor is not one that I'm familiar with, but they all pretty much work the same way. So I don't know what's going on, but as you guys saw, I cranked it up. I cranked the idle screw all the way up. So we're going about 30, between 20 and 30 miles an hour right now, which is faster than the 10 it was doing before.
So that's the state of things right now, 20 to 30 miles an hour. Will we make it? I don't know. I, I keep trying to go over my head while we're driving and I have plenty of time to think on only 20 miles an hour as to what happened because really there's no reason that this should have happened. Um, you know, it, with new carburetor and all the other new parts we put on it. And uh, the only thing, I didn't change all the spark plugs in it, but the spark plugs that we pulled out looked good. Um, they just looked like, you know, used spark plugs, like how they look when they're in a car. They still look like they should have worked, so I don't think it was that. I definitely think that there was something bad wrong inside this carburetor. I don't know what, but that's where we're at. So will we make it the rest of the way? I don't know. We're getting into traffic now. Something's happening. Pulling over. Couldn't make it to the shade. What's wrong? Out of like, gas? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's okay. As long as it's just out of gas. Golly, man. I got every bit out of this can. How's it been, Lewis? I mean, 30 miles an hour. How's it been? Really? I, well, we hit 40 a couple times going downhill. I think that that was actually like 30. Well, well I going did, downhill. I took it out of gear and it was going oh, faster yeah? downhill than it was in gear. Yeah, for sure. Um, How's the ride, though? It's not bad. Once we get running good, this is going to be a good truck. Yeah. God, we're so close. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put in the uh, next tank of fuel. Just like that. All right, filled up. Well, that's the good thing about going so slow is you got more heat in this tire. Yeah, yeah. You taking the rest of the way? Nope. <laughs> I have no desire to drive it any more than I already have. Will it run? Second edition. What, the third or fourth time we've stopped? Yeah. Where's it? It sucked every drop out of that can. You gotta get gas back up to the carburetor. There it is. Go ahead and pull off. I'll catch up. Are you sure you can? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll try to go slow. Oh,
despite sounding like it was about to blow up at any given moment, we did pretty well. We made it. Yeah. Somehow. I'm looking forward to this truck being a truck again. So I think step one is going to be taking off that Holly carburetor and throwing it away. Well, no, remember, it was recommended by the shop that rebuilt it that it should be rebuilt. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> They're very adamant about that. It's every place in there. I recommend throwing it away and finding something that is not that carburetor to put on there. You know, that carburetor has a governor and all sorts of stuff. This truck don't need that. No. You need to unleash the full power of <laughs> the 345 Industrial. Industrial. <laughs> Matter of fact, you know what? All my projects need a name. This is the slow haul. <laughs> the slow haul. <laughs> this is definitely the slow haul. Well, years from now, this thing will be repowered, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I guess the next installment is going to be fixing everything. Yeah. I just need it to be a moving truck right now. After that, it's got grander.